Hey guys, what's up? I'm here today to have a look at the distortion menu. So we have we have a look here in our plugins. We're down to distortion, and look how many we have in here. We have absolutely loads. So uh, I'm probably gonna have to split this into maybe like two or three videos, because to be honest, a lot of these are pretty damn cool. So um, I'm gonna try and cover as many of them as I can because I do use quite a lot. <coughs> Excuse me, a lot of them. So uh, the first one we have here is Bezier Warp. Uh, now I have this clip, uh, it's just a little effect that I rendered, um, one of the old Diato web tutorials which I still use this element all the time, it's really simple to make, just done with some fractal noise but um, I have it pre-rendered because I use it a lot and um, it's a really useful effect. So, uh, But if we have a look here, so we've dropped the Bezier warp on and uh, I'm going to turn this up to 10 just so we have maximum quality. So uh, on this footage, what, what you'll see is you, you can't really see a lot, and uh, but if you select the effect up here on the left, you'll see you start getting these kind of uh, corner things. Uh, I guess they're, they're tangents, um, I'm not sure. I usually leave the ones on the side because you don't want to crop the side, but you can see now we've actually, uh, you, it allows you to push uh, your effect around. And um, here we can make it look like it's on a psych or something. Um, like a you know kind of uh, ramp and uh, give it some perspective and now we look like we're in some kind of like room rather than it just being a flat effect so that's essentially what it does um, you just uh, I'm gonna pull this up to 100 uh, you just basically like you can distort things inwards and if I if I do it on um, I have uh, these eyes here and again I'm going to try and drop this on here and you'll just see it just allows you to push things around and move things around. So yeah, usually I'll use it on uh, effects such as that flat one or just to kind of re-scale something. But uh, it's an effect I used a lot when I first started using After Effects. I don't use it that much anymore. Uh, bulge is really simple. It basically offers you this hole and uh, if we scale it up, uh, you'll see exactly what it's doing. It's just offering a bulge. So it's almost like there's something beneath your footage and it's kind of pushing in. And I believe you can push inwards as well. So if you, you can come the other way. And uh, I'm just going to make this wider and higher. And so you can see it's kind of almost doing the opposite of what we did before, which is creating this, um, this kind of uh, inwards circular effect. Uh, and again, if we use it on the footage of these eyes you can use it on the eyes to make the eyes bigger and stuff and so that's something that you might be inclined to do you can use these little corners here to pull it out and uh, so if I take off the if I click off the effect here I can just edit the height and stuff and you can make uh, add, get some pretty trippy effects going on here you can make the eye go inwards but uh, I would probably use it outwards and uh, yeah, you can play with the height there, so that you can get some really extreme looking eyes. <laughs> so yeah, bulge is kind of fun. Uh, Bend it is probably one of the more unique effects. So what I'm going to do is create a new solid. Uh, that looks about right. Now what I'm going to do is drop Bend it on here and you'll see exactly what it does. So it allows us to kind of um, bend our footage around so what I might you know how would I use this in some kind of uh, effect so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, double click on this solid and I have my paint panel here so I'm going to come up and get my brush tool and um, I'm going to just draw um, some eyes and if I hold control and right click we can change the size of our brush here so let's just say we've got this uh, demonic looking super meat boy style uh, I'm going to change the color I might try and make it look vaguely super meat boy style and uh, if we swap this around I'm just going to draw some little white dots so now it actually does kind of semi look like super meat boy um, so we're going to have to come out of this back into our composition now. So we've got our little cube with a little face on, which is cute. I'm going to drop Bender on it. Now, as you can see here, what it's done is it's it's not 
understood our dimensions so we've got to pull this to the top and this to the bottom and now we'll see we have uh, the full extent of our model back and now if I click on bend you can see we can bend it sideways now the problem is the uh, boundaries of our solid are here as you can see um, so what we're gonna have to do is add a little plugin called uh, grow bounds so this basically allows you to um, expand the edge of your area so that other effects can work so um, so if I bend like this you'll see uh, it allows us to extend the range of our um, of our solid so there we go so we've done that now and so now we have this uh, little character and we can bend him like this there's loads of cool uh, ways you can do it uh, you can do the extended bend which uh, allows you to go like all the way as you can see here we're still getting some clipping so I'm just going to extend that there we go we've got um, yeah as long as you put the floor and the top up there that's kind of cool so that's bend it now it's kind of confusing because you have two you have bend it and you have bender and um, bender is kind of similar so again you're going to want to set the top and the bottom and uh, as you can see here we've got this kind of like this is more like a slant almost but you've got like the Marilyn which I think is kind of like a Marilyn Monroe waist maybe I guess um, so you can adjust it to the distance and uh, you can <laughs> get that kind of stuff going on you got the sharp turns so you got these kind of like um, that one and you got the box so it's, it's almost like he's weaving it's like you can't hear me you can't hear me over here over here and so that kind of stuff so um, bends are really useful like I use bend it more um, like I said because uh, if you have if I was to make this little guy move this way uh, let's just reset the bend to zero so I'm making a move from one side to the last and I'm going to ease him in so I'm gonna uh, actually no I'm not I'm gonna make it static but if you make it so that when he hits here um, he then you know like bends and then you know he kind of almost straightens out uh, and again I'm doing some really rough keyframing but you can do it so he kind of like bobbles into place so uh, yeah I mean obviously you can probably do it way better than I did but um, just for the kind of quick sake of showing you an example there we go so he's kind of moving and then he kind of like uh, jumps into place so that's that's how benders work and bend it and so they're kind of cool uh, moving on blobby eyes uh, I don't use this one that much but I will show you what it does let's drop it on this footage and as you can see here you get this kind of like weird uh, I'm gonna get rid of the paint panel here now you get this weird kind of uh, distorted um, blobby effect and you can use different channels you can use like the red channel the, the blue channel um, to actually kind of like make this effect and then you can almost get it use it as a transition if you go to uh, cut away and just keyframe that so you can almost have it coming in and it looks kind of like water and you can change the lighting as well you can like make the lighting more intense and that's going to pick up more highlights and uh, you know you can really push that effect and you can play with like the specularity and stuff of the material much like you can with 3D layers so um, that's kind of a cool effect and if you want to do like a watery transition other than that I'd say it's quite limited uh, flow motion is uh, one of my favorite effects so just making weird shit uh, so if we do this we're gonna see um, so it allows you to create these two knots almost and these knots it will basically try and create um, <laughs> a kind of like distortion effect from one to the other if we put that anti-aliasing on high and if you play with this effect you can kind of like get these weird almost Apex 20 kind of uh, just demonic <laughs> looking lips <laughs> and you can uh, actually like keyframe the effects moving around it's actually quite fun to play with grid I barely use, lens I barely use, it kind of makes it into like a circle almost but. Uh, almost like uh, I don't know if you've seen the videos with like the 3d GoPros um, where they put like a GoPro on the top of someone's head with like 360 degree view and you get this weird look at, at the world and so you can actually kind of get these weird uh, trippy effects like this going on but uh, again it's not one I use that much if ever
Uh, page turn is actually one of the more useful ones. So it allows you to uh, use footage to kind of uh, displace itself. So you can kind of animate this turning. And uh, you know, I've used this even in high end, um, high end videos. You can choose which corner turns. So you have the top left. You can peel from the top left, the top right, and so this gets used in adverts a lot at the end to kind of like peel away uh, the, you know, like maybe one page and then reveal an offer at the end or something like that. And you can have a front and a back page. You can have front page, just a front page, just a back page, and then that way you can actually. Um, can actually even choose what the back side is so here if I peel now we've got the girl on the other side and so you can kind of like almost try and line that up and do some cool stuff with that so um, yeah and you know you have certain effects like how opaque the the back page is if you want it 100% opaque which usually you would you can do that and by keyframing like across and then down you can get some some like pretty realistic looking stuff you can change the fold radius so uh, this kind of like is like how how far or, uh, so here we have it a lot more floppy and then if you have the fold radius like really low it's like a really sharp turn so actually pretty powerful effect as it happens and uh, I'm gonna leave it there for the first set of distortion filters uh, as you can see there's some really cool stuff really useful stuff uh, so we're gonna stop there and I'll leave that till tomorrow so I'll see you then and thanks for watching as always guys